What's up, y'all? I'm KM Best, and we are here to talk about my top seven favorite decks in the Marvel Snap metagame. As always, this is just my opinion, but it's a relatively informed one, so let's jump into the first list, which is dominating the metagame right now. This is OnlyStats.com. It uses miles and stature to boost the power of Darkhawk decks. I view this deck as a spiritual successor to Dino Hawk. This deck, instead of playing Devil Dinosaur, after the buff to Enchantress, now we've decided, all right, I'd like to be less vulnerable to tech cards, so we play Black Bolt and Stature, we play Jeff and Miles. Now, I know people are going to ask, can I play this deck without Nebula? Can I play this deck without Jeff? Yeah, you can. Nebula can be Iceman, Jeff can be Nightcrawler, you're going to be a little more vulnerable to Killmonger just on volume, but a less vulnerable in terms of you're not going to be over-investing into Nebula. Now, you can absolutely make those changes. I think if you were only missing Nebula, you would replace her with Nightcrawler. If you were missing both of them, you'd probably make both of the changes. Now, the major thing that this deck does need to know going into other, uh, other matchups is you're going to output a ton of stats, but it's not going to feel like you're dominating every game. You're going to feel like all of these games you're going to be in the games you're going to be like oh man this is so close this is so close you just you you get enough to to win all those games is kind of the thing when i played this deck i came away from it thinking you know man maybe this isn't as strong as i thought it was and then i looked at my stats and my stats were ridiculous like i have other decks that i think personally it's like oh well you know I feel like the thing this deck is doing is stronger and then i go look at my win rate and it's like oh no i'm just wrong like, whether or not the deck feels good is one thing, but whether or not the deck wins games is actually the only thing that matters. And by basically every statistical metric on untapped.gg and in my own experience, this is the deck that's just going to win the most games. So it is easily the most important thing to understand about this metagame right now is what are you going to do about this? I do want to give special mention to a card like Black Bolt. Black Bolt gives a lot of decks that would be reasonable into this a lot of problems specifically decks that revolve around wave remember decks like death wave and doom wave are looking to play wave and then a big thing and because of the way the discounts work on death specifically if they play wave the wave resolves first and then you play black bolt it's gonna hit the death every single time as long as something has died it's targeting death wave specifically in this manner and it is a tough matchup for the death wave deck to get through in fact if this deck didn't exist i would say death wave would be a much higher place on this tier list so this is definitely you know number one with a bullet for this week you got to know about this you got to pay attention to this and it is one of the best decks in the game a very good interactive stat deck it's sort of like a souped up version of Sarah control where we're just like, yeah, actually between Zabu and stature and miles, we can get more stats out than Sarah control. Anyway, it's a comp it's, it's a combination Sarah control devil dino type deck. That's what's happening here. And I think it just deserves to be respected because it is just good in so many situations. This is the bar you have to cross if you want to be competitive in the, in this metagame. Next up is my build of Sarah Control, and I totally understand if you think, hey, KM, this is not the build of Sarah Control I would play. I want to play Zabu and Darkhawk in it. I get it. But I think if you want to play Zabu and Darkhawk, you want to be playing the first deck we talked about and not Sarah Control. I think the upsides of this list are best maximized by a list that's built like this. I also think that perhaps if you did want to play Sarah Control with Zabu and Darkhawk instead of playing the only stats deck the reason for that would be the gaining of killmonger as an option in the list so i do think that's definitely worth pointing out that the upside of having killmonger is significant you can see i'm still running leader here it's kind of just a ladder thing at this point originally i had it in there as a way to combat sandman but sandman has really died down recently partially because it's predictable and partially because I feel like there's something there still, but I can't get my 
fingers on it. I can't get to it. I feel like there's something there with Sandman, but I can't get to it. And I think a lot of other people are having the same issue with like building a Sandman deck that actually makes sense into such a varied metagame. So I do think that like it's easy to look at all these decks as decks that explode on turn six and then Sandman beats them. But it's like they're a little bit better against Sandman than you think they are a lot of the time. And Sarah Control, here we have the leader. We're a little bit better against Sandman than the Sandman gamer may expect. And of course, we also have just a ton of other options for our turn six. Hit monkey combos, Mysterio with the hit monkey, whatever tech cards we want to play. Just options, 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 options. One of the things that you'll notice with other lists is they may feel pressured to actually tempo out an Enchantress. This deck is almost never tempoing out an Enchantress. It's always going to be able to save that to try to hit the Dark Hawk on the final turn. Definitely something that will come up for you. I very rarely tempo the Enchantress. This deck is my pick for most underrated deck of the entire metagame right now. People are running around looking for like what beats the OnlyStats.com deck. This deck. This deck has a very good heads up matchup into it because it simply goes bigger. Our numbers are bigger than their numbers most of the time. That's just how it is. And it is so scary to play against this deck. When you play against this deck, you end up in a situation where like if they play Moon Girl and Snap, it's like one of the scariest possible outcomes you can ever experience. It's like, oh my God, they could have anything in there. There could be any amount of power going anywhere with a list like this. One of the weaknesses it does have is it can be a little inconsistent. You are trying to do one thing basically all of the time. You also are generally not very good into lists leveraging Storm. Lists leveraging Storm are on the upswing right now because of Nebula. So you do have some weaknesses that are in the metagame. So generally, you know, your turn fours are mid, your turn fives are mid. You're not great into Professor X decks. You have to like make hard reads. I played a lot against like a Storm Professor X lockdown deck and you basically just have to be like, all right, well, they're gonna Professor X so I don't get to do my combo this game. And that's not really where you wanna be, but generally your power output can keep you in those games. This is still a powerful list. There's been a lot of messing around with different shells in it. I know people have been talking about Goblin and Titania in this list. I personally believe that that just sort of takes away from some of the power that this list has. I think that the focus on the pure combo is better for it right now. Uh, the Goblin Titania stuff is very cool and very slick, but I personally believe that your win rate will be better if you just play for your combo. Next up is Death Wave, and I kind of agonized over whether this list should actually be on here, but here it is. This is Death Wave. This is what it's always been, and this list, piloted by Danny, took down Saturday's Snap Battle Arena. Uh, I watched him beat Galactus. I watched him beat the OnlyStats.com deck. Although I do think a lot of that was just he played very well. And I don't know exactly how reliable the matchup that Death Wave has into that OnlyStats deck is. I personally am under the impression that it is not a good matchup. And you have to be very aggressive when you play it. Now, this deck is on here just because it is likely just one of the better wave decks, right? One thing to keep an eye on when you play this deck is it tends to not do a lot in the early game. Like the reason Doom Wave exists as an archetype without the death stuff is because Doom Wave is more easily able to get out on the board. Whereas Death Wave is really reliant on I get to blow up my Bucky. That's tough. Like it's tough. And the reason this deck is coming back is because there's a lot less armor, there's a lot less Cosmo, but there still are things like Polaris that are going to disrupt you, right? Like, this is still something you have to respect. And I think also this deck is on the upswing a little bit because there's a lot more people playing junk decks right now and Deathlock and Carnage, when, there's, when the meta is favorable in that way, Deathlock and Carnage are just like incredible cards against junk decks. Someone plays a Green Goblin, you blow it up, like it's just... That's just really, really, really tough to beat if you're the Green Goblin player. So really, I think Death Wave is benefiting from an upswing in junk decks, a downswing in the amount of armor and Cosmo, and that's why I have it here. I think it has a relatively unfavorable matchup into the best deck in the game, but it is pretty okay. 
in the matchup. Like, it's not god-awful. It's just awkward a little bit. Like, there's a little awkward things that you'll have to learn how to navigate. Like, Black Bolt always hitting your death after the wave is just, like, the uh, stature and miles working through wave is just like uh, uh. there's a lot of things in the matchup that are just like oh man i wish that didn't work like that and unfortunately it does work like that next up is galactus uh longtime viewers of the channel will know that i'm a big booster of you know shuri galactus taskmaster stuff i i have loved nimrod galactus ever since this list uh finished top four in the snap battle arena in the hands of revis we'll actually have a longer breakdown on this list specifically sooner uh hopefully an interview with revis but specifically what this list does is have mix-ups to your galactus plan the major thing that beats Galactus gamers is that people know it's coming. And so you have to snap aggressively. You have to play aggressively. Now, because people know it's coming, you have these mix-ups, right? You play the Sherry Nimrod. You play the Sherry into Destroyer after an Electro. A lot of different things can work. So one of the questions I know everyone's going to have, Jeff. Jeff is in this list for a couple reasons. One, people like to play Professor X to beat Galactus. Jeff can make you win those lanes, then there's a Professor X, you play a Destroyer. The other thing that Jeff does is he allows you to play around Arrow on the final turn of the game once you've played Electro. So, for example, let's say that you have played Shuri into Destroyer, all right? You did this after playing Electro, so you have seven energy to work with on the final turn of the game. You're worried that they're going to arrow your Taskmaster to the lane the Destroyer is in, and then you're going to lose. You just play the Jeff second, because you can play it like that. It's a good spot to be in. So Jeff generally is just really good. It's another card that, like, okay, you play it early, and they Polaris it, and you're like, oh, wait, I don't care. I can move this out of that lane. You don't actually get to stop my Galactus. There's a bunch of little different weird upsides with him that really make him stand out in this list. So if you want to play Galactus, I think this is the way. You can also try replacing Daredevil with Kang if you're into it. Uh, another thought process would be we could replace Daredevil with Shang-Chi. Either one of those seems plausible to me because right now, you know, Daredevil opens you up to getting Polaris. That's a big risk that you run, especially because Polaris is going to be in the OnlyStats.com deck. Stormwave, an archetype that evolved out of a list that Shade and Kawatek uh came up with i believe shade came up with the list then kawatek won a small tournament with it and I, I i have a little bit of a different take on it sort of reacting to the results most recently reacting to what i expect to see on ladder so one thing you'll notice that's missing is ghost i'm just not a ghost fan against so many decks right now if death wave picks up or not ghost uh goose i'm not a goose fan against so many decks right now if Death Wave picks up in popularity, it's even worse. It's already bad because there's like a stature deck running around. And there's like, and that deck plays Zabu, so like a Dark Hawk can go in there sometimes. I do like the armor though, because if people start playing Death Wave more or Killmonger more, you're gonna really want to protect your Sunspot and Nebula. And also you can use that armor offensively in the Death Wave matchup with your Polaris to disrupt their Buckies. One of the best axis axes on which to attack Death Wave is disrupting their early Bucky Barneses. So that's definitely something to pay attention to when you you play this list and it definitely has a lot of ability to do that storm is additionally a very powerful card right now outside of dark hawk there aren't a lot of powerful turn fours in the metagame you know the moon girl deck is playing moon girl on turn four right death wave does not have strong turn fours there are not a lot of super strong turn fours and storm combined with a nebula or a sunspot can just steal a location entirely you also have a doctor doom for backup one of the hard things in this deck is figuring out how much you need to invest into your storm lane so that you know let's say you don't waste basically a doctor doom or a third of a doctor doom by buffing a storm lane you were already going to win that's definitely something you have to figure out uh another thing that strikes me as a potential change in the future is america chavez so i get why chavez is in here because it's like oh if i don't do wave on five i'm gonna lose the game but this deck actually has a lot more plans right there are more things you can do than just wave on five or lose between the storm, the lockdown plan. You got a lot of options, right? So I don't know how impactful Chavez is 
here. I, I get why it's here, but if you were looking for a place to start customizing and making this deck your own, I think that might be the place I would start. This is the actual final list, and then we're going to talk about some honorable mentions, but MODOK is a genuinely underrated archetype right now. And I say MODOK, it's really just discard. One of the things this deck does really well is dodge Shang-Chi almost entirely through the use of Dracula. It's a little tough into the wave matchups. Uh, you, you definitely end up in like some weird spots, but you know, if it's a storm deck, you know, you're very good into lane control if you're playing this deck. Between Dracula and Morbius, you probably are better into lane control than, like, basically anything else. One of the things you're going to have to learn to manage in those mashups, though, is the amount of space you have to play cards on the board with a Dracula. You don't want swarms stuck in your hand, so you do have to consider that a lot. It's definitely an important thing to do. Now, this is sort of the stock list of discard, but this list specifically was given to me by a player named Perry, so I do appreciate that. Honorable mention is this lane control deck by Get Wrecked. If you, I know there are some sickos out there who love playing lane control. It's like their favorite thing in the world is playing lane control. If you're a sicko, this deck is for you. I personally only made one change from his original list. He ran Nightcrawler over Nebula. I don't buy that. I think the more popular Death Wave gets, the worse this gets. And the more popular Modok deck gets, the worse this gets. Like, there are, there are some really bad matchups out there. But it does have its fair share of good ones as well. It's just, you're going to win a lot of close ones if you win this. And you have to be aggressive with your snaps if you do. Second honorable mention, and this is actually like five different decks, is Thanos. I have like seven Thanos lists, and I don't know which one is the best. I suspect it is this one. I think this list is what Leandro Leal was playing. I play him on ladder a bunch. I think it's this list. It was also doing pretty well on untapped. This is a, you know, classic Thanos control list. I think this is the best Thanos list, but I don't actually know because there are so many Thanos lists, but... I do want to say, I do think there probably is a good Thanos list out there. I just personally don't know what it was. So thank you all for watching. As always, I'm Cam Best. I will see you in the next one. But please remember, if you enjoy the content, to like and subscribe. I really appreciate that. It makes my good brain chemicals go burr. So thank you so much for that. And to everyone who's supported me so far, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I truly appreciate it. As always, I'm Cam Best. And I'll see you in the next one.